Hey everyone, what's up? It's Amber Bro here. And as you guys seen in the intro, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create this sort of evented time system. Kind of similar to Stardew Valley. Alrighty then, so we're going to go into the database and we're going to go to the common events. Now you do need to separate the common events that change the screen tenting. I have no idea why, but for some reason if they're patched together in the same thing that adds the counter, it stops adding the counter by one but uh every frame, but instead adds it by one every second. I don't know why this happened to me, but it's weird. Anyway, that being said, so we, um, we're going to create our first conditional branch called time underscore counter, or you can name it whatever you want actually, but the trigger is going to be parallel and we're going to create a few switches. We're going to create time inside because inside is going to determine whether or not we're indoors or not um and if we are indoors then it's not going to make the screen dark because they're going to have lighting most likely in their house depending it's up to you however you want to set that up well we're going to have display time which um is the switch used to show and hide the uh timer now and we're going to create a switch called a and pm this will determine which time like of the day it is. Like, is it in the morning or is it in the afternoon? <clears throat> so, we are going to the first uh, thing in our contents. We're going to control variables. We're going to create counter. I don't know why that daytime thing is there. Um, I'm just gonna delete that. So we're gonna create counter minute, hour, and 24 hour. 24 hour will be used to determine the true time of the day, whereas hour always counts between one to twelve. It never goes beyond 12. Okay, so yeah, we're going to do control variables, and we're going to add counter by 1. Next, we're going to create a conditional branch, which you can do by right-clicking in the flow control section here. And the conditional branch is going to say if the variable counter is greater than or equal to 150. Well, you should make it around 300 to 600, depending on how long you want um, every 10 minutes to be. To calculate that, just go to calculator and do 60 times however many seconds you want 10 minutes to be in the game. Uh, for example, if you want it to be every 5 seconds, you would do 60 times 5. So, that's 300. So, every 5 seconds, or 300 frames, then we're going to do, we're going to go control variables, we're going to set counter back to 0, and then we're going to add minute by 10. I chose to do it this way just in case you wanted to add a seconds option. I don't know why you would, uh, but it's up to you. Generally, with these sort of time systems, you never really use um, the seconds section. So we're um, so we're just using minutes and hours. Then, if we're gonna check, and we're gonna create another conditional branch. We're gonna check and see if minute is equal to sixty, and if it is, control variables. We're gonna set minute to zero. We're going to add hour by one, and we're going to add 24 hour by one. Then inside of that, still, underneath the uh, control variables, we're going to have a conditional branch to check and see if hour is equal to 12. And then we're going to have another conditional branch. We're going to check and see if the switch AM slash PM is off. Check the else branch for this one. And if it is off, we're going to control switches, which you can do um, through the game progression control switches and we're going to turn a.m. slash p.m. on so that it now becomes p.m. in the afternoon in the else section we're going to show we're just simply going to turn it off we're going to turn a.m. p.m. off and then, uh, at the end of the if a.m. p.m. is off condition we're going to set hour to zero I just realized this is useless so next we are going to check and see if 24 hour is equal to 24, and if it is, we're going to set 24 hour equal to 0. We don't need to set regular hour to 0 because that will already equal 12 by that time. Now then, next, um, these are very similar events. I'm only going to show you how I set up a couple of them, and then you can choose to set the rest up yourself. Now, just like before, um, just, just uh, click on change maximum to increase the common events. The midnight hours I have it set to where if 24 hour is less than 6 and inside is off, meaning you're outside, then it tends to screen dark. The exact same thing here, um, 
it tends to screen to nighttime if inside is off, but this time we're checking to see if 24 hour is greater than 21. So, um, early morning hours, we're going to check and see if 24 hours is greater than or equal to 6, and then we're going to check and see if greater than or less than 7. So if it's between 6 and 7, it's early morning, and if inside is off, we tent the screen to dark. Now, morning hours, as you can see here, if 24 hour is greater than or equal to 7, and it's less than 12, then it tends to screen to slightly less blue. And of course, you gotta check if inside is off. So that's how you set that sort of thing up to check between um, hours of the day and all that. And now for the display time. This is a pretty complex part. First, uh, the parallel, where the trigger is going to be parallel. The switch is going to be display time this time. Now we're going to check and see if AM slash PM is on, and uh, create else branch for this one as well. And if it is. Create the number PM at position X uh, would be 160. Picture number is 95. Else, the same thing except change the PM to AM. Same location, same picture number. Now at the end of that conditional branch, we're going to show picture number 96 as a spacer at position X 94. Or 64, sorry. Then we're going to check and see if hour is equal to 0. And if it is, we're going to show number 1 at x position 0, y position 0, picture number is 97. And picture number 98, we're going to show a 2 at position 32. Now, hours 1 through 9, you can do the same thing except for just change the picture accordingly. So we're going to check and see if hour is equal to 1. And if it is, we're going to erase picture number 97, which is the first picture at the top left. And then we're instead we are going to then do show picture number 98 and we're going to show number 1 uh, at the position X of 32. Same thing with 2 except we're just going to show number 2 and so on and so forth until we get to 9. Now once it gets to 10 we're going to do show picture number 97 X position 0, Y position 0 as number 1. And of course number 2. Position 32, number 98, show the number 0. And the same thing with 11, except 0, you show 1 at 32, picture number 98. And you don't need to do 1 for 12, because once it equals 12, it goes back to 0. Now then, we're going to check and see if minute is less than or equal to 10, and if it is, we're going to show picture number 99 at location 96 as 0. If minute is equal to 10, it's going to show a 1. If minute is equal to 20, it's going to show a 2. And so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure you see the pattern by now. All the way until we get to 50. Now there's no point in the 60 one, um, because it's not going to show that. So, after all that, we are going to do show picture number 100, 0 at x location 128. That is the final number to the right. Before to work, though, you need to create a, new, a parallel process at the start of the game to turn time on and display time on. Now, do remember that when you turn display time off, you will have to manually erase those picture numbers. Otherwise, they'll just stay on screen. So let me go ahead and show you what it would uh, appear to be. Well, you already seen it at the beginning of the video, but... As you see, it's 11.30 p.m. in my save file here, and whatnot, and 11.40 now, and every, I believe, five seconds is, yep, every five seconds is ten minutes. Really, really cool system. So, in order to use this for events, though, like, let's say you can't get into this door unless it's between, between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. So, in order to do that, what we would do is we do a conditional branch and we would check and see if variable time our 24 hour is greater than or equal to 8 and inside of that we're just going to copy and paste it inside of that we're going to have another conditional branch and checking to see if it's less than or equal to 5 oops uh, 17 sorry <laughs> This right here would be between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if it is, 
I'm not going to have a transfer event, but you can have your transfer set up however you want. And if it is, uh, you're going to be able to transfer and everything. We're just going to copy and paste this. And then we're going to check and see if it's less than 8, it's closed. So if it's less than, if 24 hours is less than 8, then it says it's closed. And we're going to copy that again. There's a, there's a better way of doing this, but all I really wanted to show you was like the, how to set up the time system and everything. And if it's greater than 17, it's also closed. So, uh, if done right, it's 11.30 p.m., so it should say it's closed. However, if we change our time... to 8, let's say 8 a.m. Uh, it's not going to say a.m. on the thing because I didn't do the switch, but... It's open! I changed the thing manually, which means that the a.m. slash p.m. didn't work. But yeah, um, it's open between 8 and 5. That's how this works. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys, and I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all later. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace out.